Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears and cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in the lives of faith and communion, to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson is from Revelation chapter 7. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is from 1 John chapter 3. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is, who was, and who is to come. Amen. We live in a world of instant gratification. We want it our way and right away. Is your internet too slow? Get high speed internet. Does it take too long to gas up your car? Pay at the pump. Is snail mail really that snow, slow? Send email. Is your fast food not fast enough? Check the time on the cash register. Average serve time, 36 seconds. Some small comfort when your special order Big Mac takes 10 minutes. We eat in our cars. 
We talk on the phone in our cars. We microwave our meals and we have overnight express even on holiday delivery of our packages. We can Google and get an answer in seconds. And the one thing we don't have, it seems, is patience. No patience and no desire to look forward to things to come. But on All Saints Day, this is precisely what we confess as Christians. There is an eternal city, a paradise of God, an eternal of rest, of being with the Lord. But we do not have it yet. Now, when we walk by faith and not by sight, confessing the eternal joys of the life to come while yet struggling with this sin-filled world of death. One great struggle we face as Christians in this life is that we think that we should have all of this peace and rest right now. No waiting. When we are Christians, God should bless and reward us with a lack of problems. We think Christians shouldn't get sick and die, especially that of COVID. Christians shouldn't have trouble paying their bills. Christians shouldn't have problems with their marriages or difficulties raising their children. All of the peace and joy and bliss of heaven ought to be ours immediately, right now, instantly. But then... When these things do happen, when we find ourselves far from God, unloving toward our neighbor and full of unbelief, despair, and other great shame and vice, we wonder, wonder what's wrong. We don't feel much like saints, do we? Why? Well, because we have to let go of Christ's word. And in our unbelief, we have not heard what our Lord has said to us about being saints. Christ's word describes our life of sainthood. His word tells us what real life is like. A Christian and at the at same time comforts those who receive his word. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who mourn. They shall be comforted. Blessed are those who are hungry and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are those who are persecuted for my namesake. All of these beatitudes that our Lord speaks describes the life of saints in this world. Since we're celebrating all saints today, let us be very clear. First of all about saints. A saint is a holy person. Those who are in Christ through baptism, fed by the Holy Supper, and preached the Holy Word by the Holy Spirit and through holy ministry, those are the saints. We are saints. When we celebrate all saints, we are encouraging that all of us are saints in God's sight through Christ. After all, it is not how we live that makes us saints, but how Christ lived for us, died for us, and rose for us. Your baptism into Christ makes you a saint. Your eating and drinking of flesh and blood of Christ makes you a saint. Your being absolved of your sins makes you a saint. But saints, dear saints, are poor Mourning, harassed, hungering, and struggling saints. In this life, the path of sainthood, that is, of being Christian, is one of hardship and sorrow that does not bring with it the instant gratification that our world tries to buy and to sell. Let me explain what I mean by taking just a couple of these Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit, theirs is the kingdom of God. And blessed are those who mourn, they shall be comforted. If you listen closely to the Beatitudes, you hear a description of those who are in Christ. The Beatitudes describe those who have been crushed by God's law over their sin and have nothing going for them except Christ and his perfect life, death and resurrection for them and his gifts delivered to them in the gospel and the sacraments. The saints described by Christ are poor in spirit. That means that they have nothing to bring before God to show how well off that they are. They have a poverty of spirit, empty, nothing. They have, they, yet they have Christ, for to such is the kingdom of God. 
They mourn over their sins. They are troubled and frightened by their lack of faith. And they grieved and are sorrowful because they do not live and serve their neighbors in love. Such sin causes them to shed tears of repentance. But they are comforted. They are not just dried tears, but the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, comforts them by delivering to them baptism and the Word of God and the body and blood of Jesus. In the Beatitudes, in short, Jesus describes those who are troubled by sin, frightened by death, and suffering for his name, and who have nothing in themselves and their lives to cling to. Rather, these saints have only Christ and the promise of his future blessings. All this diminish, d- diminishes the world and our own notions about what it means to be a saint. The world sees saints as those who lead some extraordinary life for doing for others, a life of near perfection and godliness. People who have a lot of faith and can talk easily about God, saints are, in the world's eyes, those goody-goody perfect people. To the world, saints are those who are pure in heart because they do good at all time. The sinful flesh of a Christian grabs hold of this notion of sainthood and applies it to oneself. I must be a saint because I have lived a good life better than others. Or the opposite, there is no way I can even be a saint because I am not good enough, I am too sinful. Or the other idea, if I just learn to live as Christ described in the Beatitudes, I shall be a saint and I shall have all of these blessings. Let us repent of all such notions that sainthood is about us. It is about Christ and Christ delivered to us by the gospel. After all, who is the one who is truly poor in spirit? And who had a poverty of everything and everybody? Was it not Christ? Who is truly the mourner over sins, one who makes peace and has mercy on others, and who hungers and thirsts for righteousness? Is it not Christ? Christ who did all things for us? Jesus, Jesus who hungered and thirsted to bring your righteousness by dying for your sins. Indeed, the Beatitudes are not be-attitudes that we are trying to check off so that we can get blessings from God. They are descriptions, descriptions of our Savior which became ours through being in Christ. Christ is poor in spirit. Thereby, being in Christ through baptism, you are poor in spirit. Christ is pure in heart. In Christ, you are pure in heart. And so on for all of the Beatitudes. This is why he says, Blessed are those who are persecuted for my name's sake. People are not attracted, attacked by the devil, word or flesh for being good, but for having a righteousness that is not theirs own, but in Christ. The world cannot abide, it cannot stand those who trust in Christ instead of themselves. Believe it. If you are in Christ, then the world will hate you, the devil will target you, and your sinful flesh will give you no rest. That is why we flee. Flee to the divine service. Hear God's word. Receive absolution of our sins. Live in baptism. The gospel and the sacraments and what Christ comes to us are all we have in this world. There is no guarantee of easiness, of comfortability, riches, fame, fortune, etc., No, all we have in this life is our Savior. But what else do we need? Nothing. Nothing. Moreover, the promise of Christ in our baptism is that we have been a down payment, a guarantee of the blessing of the world to come. Having Christ, you do indeed have everything, but some things have not been given to you just yet. Those we confess also in the creed, I believe in the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. 
It's coming. It's coming, but it's not here yet. We know it is ours in Christ through the promises of baptism and the body and blood of Jesus, but how? But it isn't now. It's not like the world which demands it instantaneously. The everlasting city of paradise seen by Daniel and St. John with its golden streets, its clear waters, and with the Lord himself as its light. This, the saints who have gone before now enjoy, and we too will someday. For now, we live in Christ, poor in spirit, mourning, persecuted, and so on. In this life, we hold forth Christ as one who calls us saints and who goes with us as we walk by faith and not by sight. Then in the life to come, we shall see him as he is. For we will be like him and we shall live forever in paradise without fear, darkness, shame, sin, death, pain, suffering, or tears. This is the joy of the saints who have gone before us. This is the hope and future for all who are called saints in Christ. May the peace of God, which surpasses all of our understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. 
He suffered under Pontius Pilate and was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. And he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. When we were baptized into Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. A reading from Paul's letter to the Thessalonians. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others who do have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus God will bring him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the Lord, by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend upon heaven. And from the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air so that we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today these saints who have finished their course and now rest from their labors. Randy Wood Judith Joyner. Patricia Watkins. Linda Litt. Wanda Reet. Marilyn Pullman. Billy Lee Soltau. Ronald Durham Sr. Vivian Conkland. Everett Holland. Patricia Holland. Teresa Golderman. Julia Temple. Virgil Jacobs, Jr. Robert Dumeroff. Bradley Rowland. Ethel Hill. Kenneth Peters. William Hansen.
LC quick. Doreen Ruby. Wesley Rostenbach. Richard Heath. We thank you for giving these loved ones to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us aid so that we may see in death the gate to eternal life, that we may continue our course on earth in confidence until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Look kindly upon all of us who walk as yet by faith, and keep the, us in the true faith of the saints until the day when we meet you face to face. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Save and defend your church, fill it with all truth and peace. Where it is corrupt, purify it. Where it is an error, direct it. Where in anything is amiss, reform it. Where it is right, strengthen it. Where it is in want, provide for it. Where it is divided, reunite it. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Guide the nations of the world into the way of justice and truth, and establish among them the peace which is the fruit of righteousness, that they may become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We remember before you all the poor and neglected, whom it may be easy for us to forget, the homeless, the destitute, the old and the sick, and all who have none to care for them. Help us to heal those who are broken in body or spirit, and to turn their sorrow into joy. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We give you all thanks and praise, O God, for you are preparing a rich banquet for all of your saints, that we might rejoice forever in your salvation. In your Son, Jesus Christ, we have seen your deep anguish over the death of your faithful ones, and in his life-giving ministry, we have seen your glory. Though he passed through the fires of death, we now see him raised up, and making all things new. In him is our hope of resurrection and vindication for all who have trusted you. For their souls are safe in your hands. Grant that through the mystery, we and all who have gone to their rest in Christ may share in the joy of this resurrection. Through the same Jesus, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light that we need, 
awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end bring all of the world to your feasts through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom and with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, sovereign Savior and Spirit, be with you today and always. Amen. Remember the poor. Thanks be to God. 